And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at Dwarven Miner from Rather Dashing Games, which is really a great name for a company. Dwarven Miner is a 30 to 60 minute game for two to four players in which players are going to be, well, Dwarven Miners. They're going around getting things so that they can pay off patrons and those patrons will give them points. Okay, I made the game seem a little bit drier than it really is. Let's take a look at how it plays and then we'll be back. Alright, here's the board of the game. We have a score track up here. Each player has a pawn. They're trying to get the 30 points. First player to 30 is the winner. Here we have some vaults over here. Each player is going to start with a backpack. Over here we have different items. At the top we have different resources. Iron, alchemist powder, arcane crystal, precious metals, mithril, and an artifact, which is essentially a wild resource. Uh, there's also down here a bunch of different players or different people that you can get patrons. Uh, each player is going to be dealt three of these at the beginning of the game. So, you got to think of these patrons as stepping stones. For example, here we have the Engineer. The Engineer is worth four points if I build him. Also, he has a special ability. To get the Engineer, I need tools and explosives. So, I look down here. There's explosives and tools. To get explosives, I need two Alchemist Powder and an Iron. To get tools, I need two Iron, Alchemist Powder, and Precious Metals. So you need a stepping, to, first you need to get the resources to build these items, and then you need the items to get the patrons. So the way you do that is, on your turn, you get to roll these six dice. Now, when you roll these dice, you're going to be rolling different uh, of types of the resources. You can see here that I have rolled two iron, I've rolled a wild artifact, I've rolled two thievery icons, and I've rolled an orc. Now, the orc is bad because I, he's worthless and I can never re-roll him. However, the other dice I can re-roll. The thieveries allow me to steal from somebody else. I can steal one resource with one of them. If I have two, I can steal an item that someone has. If I have three, I can steal from their vault. I'll talk about that more later. And if I have four, I can steal their vault itself. But right now, no one has anything to steal from, so I'm going to re-roll these two. Oh, I re-rolled another orc and a metal. I want something different than a metal. Come on. And I can roll as many times as I want, but the problem is once I roll orcs, I'm out. So now I've rolled two metals and a arcane crystal and a wild. So I'll say, okay. So I look at the board and say, what do I want? All right, so I, oh, okay. I really need this shield here. So that's two metals. I don't have a yellow, but I did roll a wild, so I can take the shield. Now I'm not gonna spend the arcane crystals, so I'm just gonna keep it for now, and that way I can use it on a future turn. So in my backpack, I put an arcane crystal, and I also put this shield. Now those things can be stolen from me. Remember, if someone rolls one, thievery thing, they can steal an item, I mean a card from your backpack. If they roll two, they can steal a whole item from your backpack. So what the player is trying to do is once you have all the things that you need to play one of your patrons, let's say on my next turn, somehow I manage to get this heavy armor and the great axe. And I already have the shield, so I discard all three of those to play this warrior. This warrior gives me eight points, which I take immediately. And then from now on, I can reroll one orc die once per turn. And I can combine this if I have other warriors the same way. So there's all sorts of special abilities in here. This engineer, I can discard him to take a vault. You've already seen him. Uh, if I build the chieftain, he's 15 points, but everyone else gets a free crafted item of their, of their choosing. Um, the monks here, each monk played increases the value of every other monk and play by one. So if I play this guy, he's worth three points. If I play a second one, uh, they're going to each be worth four points. You can get a lot of points if you play the same types. So as you're looking at your patrons, you're looking to see what you want, what special abilities they're going to give you, but mostly, of course, you're going to see how many points they give you. You can also uh, build a vault or get one for free with that special ability. A vault, you can see here, costs two iron and two mithril. When you build a vault, you will place that in front of you. A vault is good for a couple reasons. One, it gives you spot to store extra items. Normally, you can only store two. Now you can store three, and instead of storing four resources, you can store six, 
Also, the stuff in your vault is safe unless your opponent rolls three of the thieving uh, icons, which is pretty difficult since they are only on four of the six dice. Now, if someone does roll four of these thieving icons, they can steal your whole vault with everything inside it. But that is a rare thing to do. And so that's the way the game works. You're just going to go around the table, rolling dice, uh, getting the resources, using the resources to get items, using the items to get the patrons. When you, you build a patron or, or when you hire a patron by discarding the items, you will then draw two more patrons from the top and decide which one you keep and get rid of the other one. So you always have three different patrons in your hand that you're trying to get. That's how you play. This game itself is a very easy game to get into. It's a very easy game to play because the idea is very simple. It has that Yahtzee style mechanic where you can roll the dice, except in this one you can roll them as many times as you want. But there is a push your luck element to it because you roll those orcs and well, you can't get anything that turn. The, the concept is pretty simple, get items, I, I mean, get the resources, resources become items, items become patrons. Obviously, there's going to be a bunch of disparity between all the different items and resources and patrons that you can get, and it will always seem like everyone else gets better patrons than you. However, even, you know, you have the opportunity to build those low point patrons with special abilities, or just low point patrons in general, which are easier to get out, or save up and try to get the bigger ones. The gameplay itself, like I said, is very simple, it's intuitive, and I think I'm going to solidly put this game in a category of what I call gateway games, games that are easy to get people into who've never played games before, because the idea here is very easy. The different colors and the different icons on the cards make it very clear what you're trying to do. Now, there is a couple small problems I have with the game. First of all, I think it plays best with two or three. With four, there's just a little bit downtime while you're waiting for someone else to roll their dice. Another problem with four is the thieving, the theft that can happen when people steal your stuff can be really annoying, especially early on in the game when you finally build an item and then someone steals that item from you, which can essentially negate a couple turns, one or two turns that you've already taken. And that can be annoying. You can buy a vault, of course, to help prevent this theft, but of course, that requires some extra turns to get that into play. It's not a big deal, and I certainly don't think it's a game-breaking deal, but that that is definitely there, that possibility. Or you like in your first turn, you could roll like five orcs and, and then there's not a whole lot you can do. But that kind of levels out over the course of the game. Um, so four players, just a little bit long, a little bit too much take that. You know, if you get a wild resource, there is never a reason to hang on to it in a four player game because it will be stolen from you by the time it comes back to your turn. If I get a, something that steals, why would I not take yours? However, like I said, as the game progresses, you can buy vaults, keep your stuff safe. And I like that concept. The quality of the stuff is good. The car quality is good. I like the artwork. The whole theme is very easy to get into. So I think best is a two or three player game. It goes back and forth very quickly then. The idea of rolling the dice is, is, is a lot of fun, pushing your luck. Uh, which patrons am I going to build? What items am I going to get? You know, it's not a game that I'm going to sit and write home about and say, oh, the great strategy that's involved in this game because it's pretty straightforward. Get to get to get to get. But at the same time, sometimes that's what, uh, what the, you know, the doctor's called for. So if that interests you, and I think it will interest a lot of people, or it's a very easygoing game, even people go, I don't like fantasy, that's fine. This is just a get resources to build up. Dwarven Miner is a great game to get folks into the hobby. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.